this program of post basic bsc nursing course has got three basic courses in the first year today we are going to discuss hs1 t1 block 3 in detail this this block is mainly third block labeled as maternal and child health nursing and the major course for this particular block is primary health nursing to discuss in detail we have got two experts with us mrs santosh mehta who is a senior faculty at rak college of nursing and mrs sunita patni who is also senior faculty at rak college of nursing both of our experts are community health nurse specialists so you will have a very fruitful discussion during the session there's so much of relationship between the fetus and the mother that it becomes very important for the health professionals to look after the fetus as well as the mother very well during the antenatal Pregnancy. period or perinatal period and uh, i think the role of nurse becomes very important especially in the community even in the hospital but especially in the community where we have very few doctors available and of course very few community health nurses but community health nurses would be available in the center as well as in the community so what are some of the aspects which a nurse must remember basic aspects she should remember to go and do the antenatal examination or provide antenatal care to the mother yes as a community health nurse it is it is essential that we encourage mother to register herself as soon as she becomes aware that she is pregnant and registration means that she has had her check up in the center primary health center or sub center or dai center whichever is the nearest contact point and when she goes for registration the first thing which the health worker would do is to take the complete history of the mother and if the mother is second time pregnant she will be very familiar with what registration means but if she is first time pregnant i think she needs to be informed about that registration and history giving is very important because some of the uh, outcome may be depending on what is the history which the mother is giving so when the health worker takes the history during registration an antenatal card has the columns which shows what are the history we need to collect from the mother like for example menstrual history obstetrical history past pregnancy history which includes all types of like what was the antenatal period like what was the natal period like what was the postnatal period like was there any problem any difficulty the mother had gone through like for example if previous pregnancy she had preeclampsia she had hypertension she may inform and this pregnancy earlier measures can be taken then medical history is taken from the mother it is not only her medical history even the family medical history is taken because some of the medical problems which the mother is going through like for example if she is having any infectious disease tuberculosis or any other problem which relates to pregnancy diabetes these may also help us to take decision about what when we should call her to the clinic and how we should monitor the pregnancy then also social or family history which will give us the idea if there is any genetic diseases which are there hered hereditary problems which are there or if there is any history of mother in law or mother giving birth to uh, twins or if there is any earlier problems of mother in law or mother because these are the hereditary factors which may be transferred from the paternal or maternal side so the family history has to be taken specially related to medical or related to obstetrical history so once the history is completed it it should also include last menstrual period and um, which will help us in collecting calculating the uh, edd Uh, it should also the menstrual history also should include what is the type of regularity of menstruation how, how much is the duration of menstruation or if there is any problem with menstruation all that should be uh, take um, asked from the mother and then followed by this we should have complete physical examination of the mother which means head to toe examination you must have learnt in your clinical setup 
from head to toe, why it is essential? It will help us to identify some of the medical problems which the mother may not be able to identify. We may be able to identify some deficiency diseases, some problems the mother is facing uh, or uh, it will also help us to plan uh, her natal period or postnatal period. Because when you are having head to toe examination, you may look for hair, eyes which will help us to know about anemia, mouth, lips, uh, which will also further help us to identify if there is any abnormality or if there is any signs of any infections. Then further uh, breast changes are there normal breast changes, then um, legs if there is any varicose veins, edema on the feet if the, it is there. So, whole physical examination will help us to know if there are any problems the mother is having or if the changes are normal. Because when I discussed about physiological changes during pregnancy, I tried to list some of the changes. So, we should be aware that are these changes normally taking place in the mother. Further, we should also have abdominal examination. Abdominal examination will include height of the uterus and lateral palpation and then we may do polygrip finding out what is the position, what is the um, presentation of the fetus. This is of course, in the after 20 weeks, it is more relevant because then you are able to decide on is the baby vertex presentation or breech presentation or if there is twins or if there is any other change which is there. Then sorry, we should further do lab investigations. By lab investigations, we mean some of the investigations which are done routine, some of the investigations which may be done once. Like for example, VDRL is done once during pregnancy, RH incompatibility or RH factor is seen that is also may be done once. But routine examinations are like HB estimation, urine examination which may be done repeatedly when the mother is coming to the clinic. Of course, every week it does not need to be repeated, but at a frequent intervals it may be repeated. But if mother shows any abnormal signs like for example, if blood sugar is high or if uh, there is albumin present in the urine, then it may be done at a frequent interval. So, these are the lab investigations which may be done for the antenatal mother. So, this completes with the uh, history and lab investigations, but further a confirmation from the medical officer for all these investigations and chest examination is done by the medical officer to observe if there is any chest infection or if this heart sounds are normal, there is no enlargement of heart, all this she may be able to help in assessment. So, so from this slide we can see that uh, maternal care during pregnancy would include the health history. This uh, has got the health history and under health history, the menstrual history is taken care of, obstetric history, past pregnancy, uh, present pregnancy, also uh, you ask for the medical history and socioeconomic history, so that uh, we can guide the mother about her uh, delivery also. Then physical examination are done, then yes. you have said the lab screening tests are done and then another important point which you were touching in between was assessment of perinatal risk factors. Yes. Now, when we talk about the risk factors, how do we de detect the high risk pregnancy and yes. what kind of advice we will give to mother as nursing personnel when we identify that the mother is in high risk pregnancy. Yes, there are various factors or there are various reasons which may be there which may tell us that this mother is a high risk mother. There are some factors which are there because of the mother like for example, height of the mother, age of the mother, the gravida these are some of the, the factors which may be present and there are some factors which may be because of present pregnancy like for example, malpresentation, hydramnus, anemia, preeclampsia uh, or uh, antepartum hemorrhage, previous stillbirth, intrauterine death or prolonged uh, labor or previous prong, prolonged labor history or this prolonged problems may be there or it may be post dated pregnancy. All these may be the high risk factors which may health worker to decide 
that this mother needs a special care. Now, this special care may be started in the health center itself. Like for example, for anemia you may not refer the mother, but you may call her more frequently. You may give her health education which will help her to improve her diet. You may give her iron supplementation, but sometimes factors like malpresentation, preeclampsia, you may have to refer the mother to the referral point, which may be district hospital, which may be the um, hospital or which may be a health center, a primary health center where you may have to refer this mother for care so, uh, during um, antenatal period and during uh, intranatal period. All those mothers we which have presented with high risk factors, we should encourage for institutional delivery. Whereas, those mothers who are presenting with normal um, pregnancy may have home delivery, but these days with more technological advancement, more facilities available, all the mothers are encouraged to have institutional delivery. But if they have home delivery, we should encourage them to have delivery by trained birth attendants. Now, uh, these are very uh, much oriented to the medical care of the mother yes. and the fetus, but there are certain other things also uh, by which the mother would like to feel pri pride in carrying the pregnancy. Now, there are certain general health measures which uh, as a nurse uh, one can advise to the mother during pregnancy, like one is very common is uh, personal hygiene and grooming. Yes. Because the moment the mother becomes pregnant, she thinks well, that she has achieved the goal, she is going to be a mother, but along with that there are certain other things required, so that she feels very comfortable, she feels nice and happy yes. and also pride of carrying the baby with her. Yes. So, what are some of the things which you think a nurse can pass on the messages to the mother, so that she is able to take care of herself well in her clothings, in her hygiene, in yes. sexuality and other aspects. Would you like to explain some of these features? Yes, these are some of the antenatal advices which okay. should be given to the mother when she comes for care. Yes. Of course, as you said, the medical care is given. That is essential and that everyone does it. But as a community health nurse, we should encourage her to have regular checkup. We should even try to give her a schedule like first trimester come every month, second trimester come after, after fortnight and third trimester come every week for the antenatal checkup. And when she comes, we should try to tell her, as I said, normal changes may be informed, but with normal changes what she can do. Like we said, personal hygiene is important because personal hygiene contributes to prevention of infection contributes to proper growth and development of the fetus. It also contributes to her own feeling of well-being because this is a time when mother may feel lazy or may feel uncomfortable if she has a problem of hyperemesis gravidarum or she has uh, vomiting in the morning, nausea, heartburn. These are some of the problems which may be there, but if she takes care of herself, she plans her diet, she is uh, taking small amounts at frequent intervals, is taking adequate rest and sleep. Access, antenatal exercises are taught to her. She is also taught some of the do's and don'ts about the pregnancy, like not wearing high heels, not going for traveling, um, even uh, um, prevent, or uh, you can say, abstinence for uh, early pregnancy. All these things, if she is explained to, she will feel very comfortable and she will have a feeling of well being and she will also develop trust and confidence in you. Even if sometimes she has any problem, she will come to you because she will feel that you will you are the right guide for her. So, this is the time when you have to help her to accept her pregnancy and have psychological adaptation to the pregnancy and this means it is not her accepting the pregnancy, it is also helping the family members should be able to help her to be able to accept the pregnancy. Of course, the first gravida mother or you can say primary mother is really Im needing the care from the health worker, from the family. She also need a support from the husband and that, that is why we encourage the mothers 
or when the primary mothers are coming to center, at least they should bring their husband once or twice in the clinic so that we can give the advice to the husband who is taking care of her in the family and with the trend in the nuclear family, it is all the more important those members in the family should be able to help the mother to take decision about her own self like wearing of loose clothing, seasonal clothing. Um, being in con comfortable posture, not stressing her back or not carrying some heavy weights, all this will help her to have a feeling of well-being during the antenatal period and plan for natal period. Like when you are teaching her about antenatal exercises and some of the uh, exercise even during the natal period, like how she should bear down or what are, how she should give some pressure and during postnatal period, what type of position she should observe, all that if she is informed, she will feel that she has had a comfortable pregnancy and she will have a pride of being a pregnant woman and she will be able to give a birth to a healthy baby. Because if she has taken care of herself, she has had adequate nutrition, she will not go in for premature labor or she will not have any problems and it will be he healthy newborn which will be there. And as you have talked about breastfeeding, the baby friendly uh, breastfeeding week is there and uh, more and more we should encourage her about what changes are there in the breast and how she can plan for giving breastfeeding to the baby because psychologically she has to be prepared for adapting to uh, breastfeeding. Uh, the other important aspect is the preparation of infant for yes. receiving infant. Yes. It, if, if there is a separate room, it is all right. Correct. That infant room can be prepared. But otherwise, a separate corner, I mean, mother can be advised to prepare a separate corner to receive the infant. It is towards the last trimester yes. probably. And uh, normally we find, of course, in the urban community or by and large, uh, the parents start preparing for receiving the infant. And this, uh, this can be verbalized. Yes. And the mother can be just asked a question how are you going to prepare where when you have a baby where are you going to keep the baby and this should be asked in context with the uh, with the socio-cultural setup. setup of the family mm -hmm. it is not that if it is joint family and there is uh, uh, not enough of a place and then we talk about the separate room or a separate corner but what are the other preparation the mother and father are doing to receive the infant yes. because I think what you were talking a psychosocial adaptation of the uh, child in the family is equally important that is you know accepting of the pregnancy accepting that uh, one is going to have an addition in the family yes. the role of father is going to increase uh, the sharing of the responsibility of mother and father is going to increase and if the woman is working there has to be adaptability and adjustment yes. to bring uh, bring the baby and i mean if it is a nuclear family which you are talking about so as you very rightly said that there is effect of pregnancy on the mother herself definitely but effect of the pregnancy is there on the whole, whole family, family also yes. and the family must start accepting it's it's not only that till the time the mother is pregnant but it is also preparation afterwards mm -hmm. that how the care will be provided how the mother will be able to take up the task of looking after the small baby and the job and what role father would play. So, this should be worked out over a period of 9 months and that will really create, you know, that will start a bonding with the fetus from the very beginning, you know, when you start thinking of receiving. Well, these are some of the important features I think we have discussed as the time uh, is uh, finishing up. I would like to highlight that both the experts have discussed in quite a detail what role a nurse plays in the perinatal or antenatal period. Yes. And I think it is a very uh, wholesome kind of a session on which we have spent a lot of time on the care of the antenatal mother. May it be physical care, obstetrical care, medical care, psychological care and sociological care which a mother needs to receive during pregnancy and family by and large needs to receive when a, a lady in the house is pregnant. Yes. Thank you very much Mrs. Patni and Mrs. Mehta for Sorry. being with us Thank today. You. Thank you so much. <laughs>